In this program, I am still using the Pen EPL3 and restricting myself to the 14 to 42 lens. It is a very useful, high quality combination that can be slipped into a pocket. Indispensable if on a long walk over mountain and moorland. On a visit to relatives in Lancashire, I took time off for a trip to Salford Keys, where many of the BBC programmes are produced and broadcast, including the breakfast show. I found the architecture of the Lowry Bridge fascinating, which you can see in a corner of the image. But of course, the main attraction now was that fleeting moment, that dark cloud, but it hung around for a bit longer. A few more buildings may have been erected since this shot was taken. We did a tour of the Ribble Valley, which extends from the Yorkshire Dales, where the river has its birth, to Preston before entering the Irish Sea. This is not the River Ribble, but a tributary, the Hodder, west of Clitheroe, where this graceful bridge with a span so delicate gives the impression that it might give way under the strain of a heavy load. I am shooting from a nearby road bridge, carrying a fair amount of traffic, so a quick snap is essential for which the EPL3 is ideally suited. Pendle Hill is also known as the Witch's Hill, where, supposedly, wicked deeds took place at the dead of night. We played safe. By now it had clouded over, so finding and waiting for that sunny interval that makes all the difference becomes the challenge in real landscape photography. I stayed at St. Anne's on the Sea, which is on the northern shore of the Ribble Estuary, not far from Blackpool. It gave me plenty of opportunity to visit the beach at sunset. Now this is the type of shot where spot metering is essential, otherwise the area around the sun may burn out to an unacceptable degree. Some lightening of shadows in post-production may be required. The same applies here at St. Ives. Otherwise, the highlight on the sea, which is very intense, will burn out to a pure white, looking quite horrid. It is also important to save to raw. Now, this gives the photographer greater flexibility in post-production, especially when determining such things as how much detail of the seawall should be shown. I have complete control over that. In contrast to the previous Cornish shot, this is the type of interpretation that is more likely to achieve commercial reproduction, particularly Canada's. But don't be fooled into thinking that it is easy to achieve. Apart from the right sort of sun, you don't want too many heavy shadows spoiling the scene. One of the major benefits of Micro Four Thirds is more depth of field. When required, and we see it here, but don't be fooled into thinking that differential focusing is not possible. It is. The numbers might be different, but the results are largely the same, especially if you understand apertures and focal lengths of lenses beyond their obvious usage. Notice too that by spot metering I have tamed the highlights of the sea, but the clouds are getting dangerously overexposed, aren't they? This celebrated view is all down to being in the right place, at the right time, with the right sort of weather. I had been photographing in another part of Cambridgeshire, literally with my head in the clouds, keeping an eye on the weather. As I had to return home from Cambridge, I diverted to this famous viewpoint, which I had photographed before, so I knew something about it. This is the best, even though somewhat uncommercial. Publishers usually prefer cumulus clouds, not dark, angry ones. One of the ways to prevent unsightly flare when including the sun is to stop down. Now that can cause diffraction, or 
If you have one, use a prime lens. I didn't at the time. Alternatively, if a handy shrub is around, then use it to partially conceal the sun, but spot meter. Don't forget that. Don't use a tripod either for this type of shot. You will damage the sensor. Best to handhold. And quite honestly, if a reasonably fit person cannot handhold at a thousandth of a second with a wide-angle lens, then there is a problem beyond my expertise and indeed photography. Much has changed for visitors to Stonehenge since this shot was taken, but I would imagine that you can still only walk around stones and not between them. I have been told that visitors were adding their own graffiti. I stayed on until sunset when most people had departed, and under a westering sun they acquire a magical presence. By saving to Raw, I can make decisions in post-production as to how much I render the stones as a silhouette, helped, of course, by spot-metering for the sky in the first place. HF Holidays currently own 15 hotels dotted around the UK, and one of the best for photographers is located on the shore of Loch Leven which is about 12 miles south of Fort William. It has a fantastic aspect to the east, ideal for sunrises with the pap of Glengoe, a focal point. The location is pretty good at other times, and of course the great benefit of staying at this hotel is that shots like this can be achieved at a moment's notice. I am not running holidays now and will miss this magical location, not to mention the HF experience, which is unique. Looking back at this set of images taken ten years ago, I am, in retrospect, surprised and pleased about the excellent quality of the pen camera. It is perhaps marketed towards the more fashionable photographer for social events, and if so, don't let that put you off a purchase of the latest model. 